What is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to another look back at a off season and kind of reacting to what an article wrote. Today we're going to be reacting to Bleacher Report's every NBA team's best and worst off season moves so far from the 2017 off season. So this was by Adam Frommel of Bleacher Report. And if you guys are enjoying these videos, don't forget to drop a thumbs up. Also, um, some of you may have realized I disabled comments for like the first time ever um, on my video yesterday, my tier list video. I do like making tier list videos, but always, like, I say it every time in the video just to stress about it because some people still don't know. Like, it's my opinion, obviously, and it's subjective, and, like, people, I guess, hate my, like, sometimes, like, hate your opinions. That's what sucks kind of, like, being the YouTube guy because, like, obviously, I put my opinions out there, and if somebody, I bet you if, like, anybody out there put their top 80 players in the tier list someone would have something wrong with it obviously so it just sucks like like i'm okay with people saying like he should have been here he should have been here in their opinion that's fine but like when people are telling me to like kill myself never to watch basketball again or i don't watch basketball at all it's like all right like it's kind of annoying so i disabled comments because i saw like three of them four of them and i was just like nope i'm not dealing with it that's the first time i ever i guess like reacted that way um just to let you guys know if you were curious so i don't know if i'm gonna do tier list anymore maybe if i do a I'll limit the comment section or I won't allow comments. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But um, maybe, maybe I overreacted. Maybe I did. Maybe I got to stop being um so sensitive. Uh, so let's get into this. So um, yeah, let's look at this and we'll go in hindsight. Obviously, we'll look. Did the Were these their best move or was it a really bad move or were their worst moves? Good moves. So let's get into this. So uh, the Atlanta Hawks uh, best move drafting John Collins. Yeah, that was a really good decision. Um, drafting him in what the team? Yeah, 19th overall. Turned into a borderline all-star this year. I would say he was a top 30 player in the Eastern Conference this year. He has been one. So that's pretty good there. And then their worst move was trading Dwight Howard for a minimal return. Honestly, looking back at that time period where Dwight Howard was on the Nets, the Wizards, the Hornets, the Hawks, I don't think you were going to ever get a great return for Dwight Howard. They kind of overpaid for him to begin with, so... Uh, I don't know. Part Okay, he does say parting with Dwight Howard is fine. Dealing him for pennies on the dollar is an acceptable acceptable result when you are trying to clear cap space and open minutes for younger players, essentially shifting into a full-fledged rebuild, but the Atlanta Hawks took the pennies on the dollar and gave up another piece. Um, I'm not sure. Did they give up uh, the 31st pick, I'm guessing? Yeah. So, Boston Celtics here. Best move, signing Gordon Hayward. I mean, at that time, that was amazing. I don't have the five positions anymore. But yeah, uh, obviously, he got hurt, and it sucked, and his, his first full year with Boston wasn't very good, obviously, because it was his rehab year, and then this year, he has been a very good player, though, so that is turning back into, like, their best move. Their worst move, none. Losing Avery Bradley, I mean, trading him for Marcus Morris was actually a pretty good trade, looking back on it. They ended up getting Jason Tatum for Mark, the number one pick, and they ended up getting a future first. I guess missing out on Butler and Paul George, but now, yeah, I guess that was a pretty good offseason for Boston, right? Moving over here to the Brooks, Brooklyn Nets. I don't know why I think that photo is funny of d Um, But yeah, uh, it's like he's like a like a model in that photo. But uh, best move trading for D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, and it ended up kind of getting them KD and Kyrie because they were really bad and they didn't have a lot of assets, but they were like, we'll take on Timothy Mozgov for the former second overall pick. That's actually still pretty good. He helped them go to the playoffs in the second year there, and they were respectable enough to go out and get KD and Kyrie. So yeah. That was a pretty good move. And then their worst move was tying up Cavs for Otto Porter Jr. Otto Porter is a junior, right? He is a junior. Because in 2K, he's not. He's just Otto Porter. And I was like, I swore he was a junior. Was this like some Mandela effect? But no, I think he is a junior, right? Um, but yeah, didn't they give also Tyler Johnson, Alan Crabb, and Otto Porter all maxes? Those should all be the worst moves of even offering that. Maybe they were like 200 IQing everybody else. I'm like, all right, we'll just match. Like, we'll throw out those deals and teams will match it. So they'll get screwed over with cap space. But I mean, what if Alan Crabb... And Tyler Johnson accepted those deals, and the teams that like Miami and um, Miami and uh, Portland didn't match. <laughs> they would probably not have Katie and Kyrie today, or maybe wouldn't have been able to get D'Lo. So yeah, that uh, definitely in the worst moves there. Charlotte, uh, best move trading for Dwight Howard. Yeah, <laughs> did not turn out to be a good good decision for them. So. Uh, not their best move, and their worst move was interesting. Michael Carter Williams with a backup one guard responsibilities. Yeah, I mean he actually was solid for Orlando. He hasn't been, like, terrible. Like, a, th a fringe third, uh, second to third point guard. Uh, more a third. I guess he was behind Augustine and Fultz. So, he was, like, the third point guard. Yeah, I think that's what he is. So, yeah, Michael Carter Williams wasn't very good for the Charlotte Hornets. I'm uh, moving over here to Chicago. Resigning. Oh! 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 Have you watched him play? No, I'm kidding. Because, uh, obviously, at that time, um, maybe we didn't know that he was going to be one of the worst players in the NBA. Cristiano Felicio is bad. And the fact that he's making 8 mil a year is 
horrible, at least for the next two years. Um, or maybe he's got he's got one year after this offseason. So, yeah, that was definitely not their best move, and I think Bulls fans can agree. And their worst move was selling Jordan Bell. Yeah, they sold the pick uh, where the Warriors bought it, and they were able to sign um, Jordan, or draft Jordan Bell in the second round, excuse me. So, Cavs uh, landing Derrick Rose on a one-year prove-yourself deal. Figuring out Derrick Rose's true value is a conundrum. Uh, he's most certainly not a max player. He proved that throughout his time with the Knicks by commanding possessions, shooting inefficient, uh, inefficiently, and serving as a little more than a turn style on defense. Okay, but he's also not a minimum player. Honestly, he didn't really work out for Cleveland anyway. They put him in that trade. I believe that ended up... Or did they waive him? No, I think he was in the trade to Utah. Then the Jazz released him. Yeah. Um... Oh, but that was their best move. Okay, yeah, I don't know why I thought that was their worst move. But yeah, um, it didn't really work out for them all that well. And then worst moves, parting ways with David Griffin. Yeah, don't part ways with your general manager right before the draft. Yeah, I mean, Colby Altman, I don't think, has done a great job there. Um, and David Griffin has done fantastic for the uh, Pelicans so far since being there. He got a little bit lucky uh, with the Zion pick, but um, yeah. And it was all avoidable so long as team owner Dan Gilbert was willing to pony up and pay the architect of a championship team. But, yeah, they didn't re-sign David Griffin. Uh, Dallas drafting Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. can find out ball. I mean, he was solid for the Mavericks, definitely. He had his flaws. But uh, I'm not going to say what he is now is a bad move for them because he honestly helped them get it. He helped them get Christoph Porzingis. So that was a pretty good move. And then worst move holding on to Wesley Matthews. Again, the Mavericks are rebuilding. I mean, they ended up getting... Um, two years later, using Wesley Matthews to get Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, Denver landing Paul Millsap. Yeah, that was a, it's been a pretty good signing for them. Um, I love those jerseys so much. Um, and then their worst move was further crowding, uh, crowding front court rotation with Tower Lydon and Trey Wiles, who were both not very good in the NBA. And you know how they got Trey Wiles? They ended up trading their pick to move down, which was with the Jazz to get Trey Wiles, and they got Trey Wiles and the Jazz later first. And you know what? The Jazz, you know who the Jazz took at the 2017 draft? Donovan Mitchell. So, yeah, that was that was a rough trade for them. The Pistons' best move was signing Anthony Tolliver. Honestly, at that time, Tolliver was still pretty solid. He was a good kind of 3 and D4. Um, so, all right, it, it was a minor move. Worst move, hard capping themselves with Langston Galway. Actually, Langston Galway has turned out to be a pretty solid player for them. Their worst move was honestly the... Oh, no, no, no. This was the year later where they got Blake Griffin. So, this was still... Okay, all right, all right. Uh, I got you here. But yeah, honestly, trading Marcus Morris for Avery Bally really wasn't a great decision. Uh, letting KCP walk was pretty good, though, because, you know, he hasn't been all that good. And they were about to give him, like, 20 mil a year. So, ended up working out well for them. Warriors, best move, everything. Well, I mean, yeah, this was this was the golden era for the Warriors. And then, uh, worst move, LOL. Yeah, okay. Uh, Houston, best move, the Chris Paul, James Harden combo. Did work out pretty well, I would say. I mean, obviously, it would have worked out worked out i guess in general if they did win it all or go to the finals and beat the warriors i mean it sucks any other year if the warriors didn't have kd they would probably at least get one finals appearance but they did lose in seven to the uh the thunder or to the warriors in the 2018 playoffs uh due to chris paul terry's hamstring when they were up three to two so yeah that sucks uh the worst move giving pj tucker for your deal not a bad move at all. He's been fine. And he's been actually really solid for them. He's been a really good role player. And honestly, he's been more than that. He's been a really good three-point shooter for them. Really good defender for them. That is definitely not their worst move. Um, or it wasn't really a bad move. So, Pacers, cheap deal for Corey Joseph, who I believe they ended up moving anyway. Um, acquiring talent on the cheap is a great way to facilitate a rebuild. And the Indiana Pacers did exactly that by making a move for Corey Joseph less useful to the Toronto Raptors because their depth at the position with Lowry and DeLon Wright, the back of one guard was, who uh, was had for nothing, was had for nothing more than Emir Pudelzic. Yeah, I mean, it didn't really work out, work out well for them. And then worst move, meager return for Paul George. I mean, it's been a pretty good return. You got two all-stars out of it, Oladipo and Sabonis. We all thought at the time that they didn't get enough value for Paul George, but you know what? Chad Buchanan, Kevin Pritchard, they know what they're doing more than we do. So, yeah, it was a good move for them. So, that was definitely not a bad move. Clippers salvaging the Chris Paul situation. Yeah, because Chris Paul could have just opted out and became a free agent. But he opted in and he let them get Lou Will, Montrezl Harrell, and Patrick Beverly. Yeah, they are all three great complementary pieces to, Ka uh, to Kawhi and Paul George right now. And they wouldn't have had them if they didn't make that Chris Paul trade. Or if Chris Paul just opted out and signed with Houston. So, yeah, 
that was definitely a great move for them. And worst move, losing Chris Paul. Yeah, obviously. Um, and then I guess no one knew that they were going to trade Blake Griffin after giving him that max deal. But you know what? They ended up getting SGA basically out of that trade and Tobias Harris. They used Tobias Harris to get Landry Shamit and a first round pick. And then they used that first round pick um, to further their uh, accusation or acquisition. Not accusation. Acquisition of Paul George. So, yeah. Um, it ended out kind of working. It ended up working out for uh, losing Chris Paul. Lakers drafting Lonzo Ball. I mean, they used him to get AD, sure, but he really didn't work out all that well for the Lakers. And then worst move, using D'Lo as trade bait. I agree. I agree. I don't know if they would have fit together, D'Lo and Ball. Would have been fun to have D'Lo, Ball, and Ingram. But yeah, they ended up selling. I mean, maybe they knew where they were going to get LeBron in the year and they couldn't wait. Maybe. Uh, so Memphis here, Ben McElmore, Flyer. Didn't work out for them, so, yeah, no, nah, we can't really say uh, that was a good move and a departing identity. Uh, so, I guess losing Vince Carter and Zach Randolph, and um, obviously, they ended up trading Marcus Hall two years later, Mike Conley two and a half years later. Okay, uh, Miami uh, TBD, I guess they didn't really make any moves at this time. I guess best move, honestly, looking back, would definitely be drafting Bam out of bio, um, but yeah, I guess, I mean, the three contracts by Johnson Waiters were horrible, so that could be in the worst move. Uh, Milwaukee resigning Tony Snell. I mean, they ended up trading him for John Moore, right? So it really didn't work out too that, uh, all that well for them. And then worst move was selling Sedaris Dormal. I mean, yeah, I guess they didn't make many moves. Sedaris Dormal didn't turn much, the former Gamecock in the NBA. Uh, Minnesota trading for Jimmy Butler. <laughs> I think we could say that was not their best move. Uh, they ended up trading the pick that ended up being Larry Markkinen at seven. They ended up trading Zach Levine. Chris Dunn, not so much, but I'm sure the Wolves, I mean... They ended up getting Malik Beasley out of Covington and a first round pick. So maybe, maybe, you'd, no, no, that doesn't sound. Because, I mean, and then they use Sarge to get Culver. No, you'd rather, I mean, if you look back on this, would you rather have Jared Culver, Malik Beasley, and a first round pick? That's going to be like, I think about 15 for the Nets or 16. Or would you rather have Zach Levine, Lowry, or Lowry Markkinen, and, um, or the pick to Larry Markin, who knows that they would have taken him. And then Chris Dunn. Obviously, you'd probably have the latter there. Uh, so that was probably not their best move. And then their worst move was signing Jamal Crawford. I mean, it was Jamal Crawford at the time. I mean, uh, how much risk are you putting into that? Uh, the Pels here re Drew Holiday. Definitely a great decision by them. And then the worst move was adding Rondo. Yeah, because they really never did much with him. I mean, was it, I don't think it was a terrible move. It wasn't a great move. It wasn't a terrible move, though. The Knicks here. Oh, God. What are we about to walk into? We just... Firing Phil Jackson was their best move. Okay. All right. So their best move was something negative to the franchise. It's when you have to fire a personnel, a top personnel. And then the worst move, Tim Hardaway Jr. Okay. So they knew this was bad. The Knicks are only, uh, Knicks are the only party worth crucifying here. Of course, the 17% of their cap is going to a player who didn't crack the top 75 in any kitchen sink metrics last season. And who has never been a plus defender. Yeah. I mean, they're right. It was a horrible contract. People or a contract. People said it would have taken two first, two first round picks to get off of him. But no, it took trading away your cornerstone franchise player in Chris Osborne's Wow. OKC, best move, yes. I'm guessing uh, getting Paul George. I refused to pick Lanny Paul George while only giving up Old, uh, Old Depot's contract voted contract and it's a bonus was downright unfair looking back on it it was pretty fair for both sides and then worst move reaching for terrence ferguson yeah i mean ferguson really hasn't worked out all that well for okc so you can have some justification for putting that move there magic here signing john hammond yeah he was the guy that did get Giannis Antetokounmpo in Milwaukee and they did need a new regime there so that was a solid move um and then the old regime traded away Old Depot and and the Sabonis pick for Serge Ibaka so it ended up uh, working out well for them uh, I think with the new regime and then uh worst move signing Shelvin Mack really wasn't a horrible move for them uh 76ers best move trading up yeah I don't think a lot of people will agree with that looking in hindsight um you guys know why and then worst move keeping Jamil Okafor yeah, I mean, obviously, in hindsight, Philly would have loved if D'Lo fell to them. Everybody thought they were going to get D'Lo, and then the Lakers were going to take Okafor, and that changed on draft night. And then maybe they would have taken Kristaps, but I don't think they were ever envisioning that. So, I guess keeping Okafor with, I mean, um, Embiid on the roster. And don't remember, Noel might have got traded this, this season, uh, this season, or was he traded the season F? Okay, so Noel was already in Dallas there. Uh, Phoenix, best move resetting Allen Williams, who was super underrated at the time, really isn't doing much in the NBA now. And then worst move, extending a qualifying offer to Alex Len. Yeah, sure. Okay. That's, yeah, that's fair. Uh, Alex Len isn't very good, and he was the fifth pick one time. Uh, Chillblazers, best, best move, moving Allen Crab for cap space. Uh, moving Allen Crab for cap space, but didn't they resign him? Oh, no, yeah. He was shooting for Andrew Nicholson, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, so they ended up moving Allen Crab. And then the worst move was their 2017 NBA draft. 
Drafted Caleb Swanigan and Zach Collins. Traded Tim Quarterman to the Rockets for cash. I mean, that wasn't terrible. Wade Festus is Ely, okay. And traded Alan Crabb for Andrew Nicker, uh, Nicholson. That's it, literally. Um, I mean, Collins, honestly, has been fine. It could have been a lot worse. Obviously, maybe if they took Donovan Mitchell there, uh, that would have been great for them. Or even Luke Kennard or John Collins. Yes, but Collins hasn't been bad in the NBA, so I don't think it's that it's been that bad. Uh, but yeah, definitely moving on from Alan Crabb was good. Uh, Sacramento, long-term deal for Bogdan Bogdanovich. That has been a good deal. Yep, definitely, 100%. And then their worst move was adding Zach Randolph. It wasn't anything special in Sacramento. Spurs here, a couple teams left. Resigning Patty Mills. I mean, I feel like he kind of got overpaid, so I don't know about that. Let's see their worst move. Pau Gasol's lengthy contract. Yeah, yeah, I can. we can all agree on that. Uh, he was definitely washed at the time. Toronto retaining Kyle Lowry. Definitely, 100%. I thought, um, I honestly thought once the Timberwolves got Jimmy Butler, they would have went after Kyle Lowry or the Sixers with Simmons and Embiid. They would have went, they would have went after Kyle Lowry, um, but it ended up not happening. Toronto kept him and he was the second best player or third best if you think Siakam was better than him um, in the finals. But yeah, he helped them get a championship. So that was a great move. And then the worst move was letting Patrick Patterson walk for cheap. Didn't really end up being, hurting them that much, I feel. Uh, Utah here, drafting Donovan Mitchell. Yep. Definitely. So I guess he was high on them. That's good. Um, and then their worst move was acquiring questionable depth behind Rudy Gobert. Uh, didn't they get Ed? D no, no, it was FKU doing Tony Bradley. Yeah, okay. So the depth wasn't great. Tony Bradley left UNC way too early. And yeah, but shout out for him uh, saying Donovan Mitchell was a good pick um, before he ever played in the NBA. And then the Wizards here. Best move, inking John Wall. Oh, I think we can look back on saying that wasn't a great contract. I mean, maybe they were up against the ball. He was a top 25 player in the NBA. He was kind of the heart and soul of that Washington team. If you let him walk, you're stepping yourself back a year. You're going to lose money to fan revenue. I guess they really had no choice, but giving him 40 plus mil a year at one point isn't going to isn't going to be classified as their best move. And then their worst move, Mike Scott, Jody Meeks combo package. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty unnotable uh, there, but yeah. I don't think that was their best move. So yeah, that is going to wrap out today's video. This is a nice trip down memory lane from something that just happened uh, just uh, under three years ago. Or I should say just above three years ago. Duh. But yeah, that is going to be for me. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments what you agree, disagree with, anything I said that you disagree with. Um, just don't tell me to kill myself. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. You can have a lively discussion down there. Um, and just tell me if I said anything stupid that you disagree with or anything that he said. Or if you want to go back to 2017, anything that happened then that wasn't mentioned, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, that is going to be for me. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video.